Hello everyone, who is ready for some tedium? Um, we are going to do a much longer uh, formal proof than our past examples uh, using quantifiers. And let's start off, I'm going to just give you the information we're working with. We know that our, um, our relation is symmetric, so if x is related to y, y is related to x, it's transitive. So if, um, and this is for all XYZ, for all XY, for all XYZ, these are universal claims. Um, and if you don't know the definitions of symmetry, transitivity, reflexivity, I will link to them in, uh, in the notes. So then we have a, a transitive relation, which is X and Y are related and y and, I, y and Z are related that implies X is related to Z. And we also have this other property here um, we'll call this dance partner <laughs> because of a uh, dance partner existence. Because uh, in one of my previous videos, we talked about um, kind of how these quantifiers meant different things depending on the order they were in. And this is the one that says, you know, for all people, there exists somebody that person can dance with. We'll keep it romantic. Um, and then we're trying to prove that with all, um, with a relation that meets all these criteria, uh, our relation is also reflexive. So the first thing you want to do when you see something like this is you want to kind of break it down and see what can we actually do here. Um, you'll see that all of these are implications, and this one requires two pieces of information. This one requires one piece of information. This is really our only given item that we can just kind of substitute for and simplify for. And it'll also help us get rid of our existential uh, quantifier. And those are annoying to deal with. Um, so let's do this one first. Uh, and when we bring it down here, we can go ahead and just say there exists an X or uh, no, there exists a Y. There exists a Y such that R C, Y. We're going to go ahead and do our universal um, elimination just right off the bat. It's going to be line three, and that's going to be changing in a, uh, or trading in a C for an X. Now, we're going to do a subproof because, like I said in a previous video, it can be helpful to do a subproof for your existential instantiations or eliminations uh, just to kind of help you keep track of your scope and help keep track of what variables you can and can't reuse and also kind of cue you uh yeah clue you in as to whether or not you can actually finish your proof so now we're going to say r c d uh, and we'll go ahead and do an existential elimination for that as our reason. We'll just go off our most recent use of that rule uh, for our line number and then we'll do a, um, a, a substitution d for y. Now we're gonna go a little further into our proof. So we've got this. What do we look like we should use or what does it look like we should use next? My thoughts take me here for uh, symmetry because we have this already and we can prove the inverse. Um, I think our kind of plan of attack should be to prove symmetry. I'll, I'll do this in a different color so that we can keep track of everything separately. Uh, we'll do red. So we should, well, we should do dance partner first, then symmetry. And then if we do symmetry, we get this. And the beauty of universal quantifiers is you can put in x twice, right? Because it's for all x, y, z. These can be the same x, y, z. These could all be c. Um, but for this case, um, everything that we have, the provided information, leads us more to something like this. And we're trying to get to r, d, c. So what we want to do is we want to get from that to transitivity and then we can prove so if we have rcd and rdc that means rc and c so we're trying to get to transitivity and then we're trying to get to reflexivity and that's kind of a good way to look at what we're trying to accomplish here 
uh, with this proof. And if you didn't follow that completely, that's totally okay. It's a little confusing. Um, I, hopefully it'll kind of start to take shape as we go along. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our uh, symmetry. And yes, we have to go through all of these substitutions because it's formal logic. We have to be all formal about it. So uh, CY implies R Y C. That's our universal elimination, line one, and put in C for X. And again, we can reuse these variables because these are universal claims. Totally okay. Uh, and now this is interesting. We can do R C D implies R D C. And we can actually reuse the D that's bound to our um, existential because this is a universal claim. Um, we can we can use something that is bound to another variable or uh, yeah bound to another quantifier. Sorry, because this applies to every single x y z even even this y. It's for everything. Our special Y is still part of everything, so we can we can use it for a um, for a universal quantifier of substitution or a universal elimination. Then we get down here, and now we want to, like I said, we want to prove our symmetry. So we want to get R D C. And how did we do that? Um, let's make this readable for starters. <laughs> Uh, how did we do this? Well, modus ponens, right? Because up here we say RCD, so that's line five. And then we say RCD implies RDC, that's line seven. So we have that. Now we can go down a little ways. And now, like I said, we want to do transitivity. Uh, this one is going to be pretty annoying just because you have to go through all these steps. Um, but like I said, it's formal logic. You have to do it. Doesn't mean you have to be happy about it. This stuff is really cool. It's just sometimes there are tedious aspects to it. Uh, I'm not going to skip over any of it. I'm going to do it in painful detail because that is how you um, retain stuff, unfortunately, is by doing it in excruciating detail, making yourself remember how to do it each and every time. So R, C, D, and R, D, Z. And of course, that's going to imply R, C, um, R, C, Z. Didn't mess up. I always mess up when it's something tedious. Uh, looks good. That's another universal elimination, and that's going to be 9, and we're putting in D for Y. And again, we can reuse this variable. It's bound to an existential, but it's also part of our universe that we're talking about. So we're, we're okay with replacing it, um, with, with doing a universal elimination with it, because it's universal. It applies to everything. So we'll do this. So R, C, D. And remember, um, we're trying to prove reflexivity. So here we go. RCD and RDC implies RCC. Uh, and that is our final universal elimination. We always cite the last line number, C for Z. And yeah, we can use the same variable in uh, two different substitutions because this is universal. This is why universals are so great. You can do so much with it. It's very nice. <laughs> now you say, okay, where's our RCD and our RDC? Well, it's right here on lines five and eight. We showed that this implies this, and we got it. So now we can do what's called an adjunction or a conjunction, whatever you want to use. Uh, I think they're both just two different ways of saying the same thing. Um, so that's an adjunction of line five and eight. 13. We're going to take this, and now we're going to get here. And now you might be saying, well, OK, that's all well and good. That's going to be another modus ponens. Actually, hold on. Uh, so that's 12 and 11. 
cool. And yeah, so you might be saying, well, that's good. We found this. That's great. But we're still in a subproof. Uh, how do we eject ourselves from this subproof to actually finish our uh, proving our proposition that this uh, these criteria lead to a reflexive relation? Um, what we can actually do here is just bring this out because c is not related to our existential elimination that's d um, and we didn't prove anything to do with d uh, we only proved something for c so we can just say existential elimination from lines uh, 5 through 13 got us here and we can leave we said you know we we substituted um, and it got us here to a claim that did not even involve that variable, so we're, we're good to go. And now we can go and say for all x, r, x, x, because that c was bound to a bunch of universal uh, quantifiers, and so it is true for all x. And that's going to be a universal initialization or a, um, a, a universal generalization and that is going to cite line 14. And this is actually the end of our proof. So just to recap, we had to go through here, kind of figure out the most expedient thing to do first, which is proving our, our dance partner existence. Um, this is a highly technical term. Make sure you commit it to memory for exams. Um, and we showed how that led to symmetry and we showed how symmetry led to transitivity because this is universal. Again, all this is universal. Put that in red. Universal. You're going to learn to love universal propositions or uh, quantifiers because it just makes proving things a lot easier. Uh, and then we put CD and then uh, DC. And again, we used C twice, once for X, once for Z, to show that it is indeed reflexive. We showed we met our criteria um, for that conditional. Prove this was not related to our existential quantifier, so we could eject it from that subproof using existential elimination. And that eventually led us to our final uh, universal in initialization or generalization, which proved our, our, um, our uh, intended conclusion, you know, the thing we wanted to prove, which was that these different relations led to our item being reflexive.